Whether that will be enough is the thing that would just be, uh, would intrigue me. Hello and welcome back to the Let's Talk Racing YouTube channel in association with Racing TV. This is looking a little bit different to the normal setup and that is because it's Super Saturday. When you're watching this at nine o'clock, this was recorded, I'd say, 5 a.m. your time. That is Maidan Racecourse, the first time I've been here. I'm going to be vlogging my experience of Super Saturday racing. I'm a Warwick man, I'm a Utoxeter, I'm a Stratford man. I love National Hunt racing. This is obviously very different, a bit warmer, and uh, no hurdles, which is a shame. Although a five furlong sprint here with four hurdles in would be recommended from me. Uh, but uh, this is a and a Thank you so much for submitting your questions. We do hope you enjoy. Me and Andrew are going to answer them both separately. Unfortunately, can't do this together, but we will be back to normality in a couple of days' time. Just quickly before we start the video, we do have a preview night in Birmingham next Thursday at Scanlon's Club. All the details are in the description. Come up, turn around, you can pay on the door. I think it's £10 um, and me and Andrew will both be there really looking forward to it. And hopefully if you're in the Cheltenham spirit and you're local, you can pop down and have a couple of hours of hopefully laughter and a few winners as well. But without further ado, let's get into it. If we can hit 500 likes on this video, that'd be superb. Thank you for all the support on these daily videos, and we'll see you soon. So the first question comes on YouTube. This is, how do you think Paul Nichols will get on at the festival? I think Brave Man's Game will finish in the top three in the Gold Cup. Stage Star has a good chance of the Ryanair. Genie's Destiny, Stay Away, Faye, Captain Teague, and Tishan also with a shout. Two, really interesting. Obviously, Paul Nichols, I think, has changed his tactics in recent years with regards to the Cheltenham Festival. Before, I think, in, I think it was probably fair to say that before last year, maybe the year before, there was probably a three or four year period where the good horses who we didn't think could win at Cheltenham wouldn't run there and he would, they would go to Aintree and they'd be very successful there, but it meant a lack of Cheltenham winners. I think in the last couple of years, he's had a more um, scattergun approach in, this, in, in the sense of if they've got a chance in a race, whether that's 10 to 1, 5 to 1, 33 to 1, they can run in the race, they'll run. He's had more runners in the last few years uh, than he did have in that time period. And it was successful last year. Did people going into the Turners think that Stage Star would win? Probably not. Did people going into the Bartlett think that Stay Away Faye was going to win? Probably not. Um, I think Captain Teague finished third in the bumper. That was a great run. A very unlike Paul Nichols thing to do, running those horses, the good horses in the bumper. As well. He may have done it in early on in his training career, but in the last, say, five, six years, he hasn't ran many horses um, and they haven't done been as successful. I thought Brave Man's Game ran a massive race. So it is interesting. I think, I actually think that his chances and his best chances are probably slightly bigger prices than, say, a Ginny's Destiny. I think Ginny's Destiny. If it's a really poor turn as it's got a chance, I'll be perfectly honest. I love Paul, N uh, Paul Nichols. I love Paul Nichols staying chasers. He does, doesn't do it for me. I think he's a, he's a, I don't think he's stage star. I thought stage star won a poor turn as, and I think people are probably thinking about last year, thinking this is going to happen in the same way with Ginny's Destiny. That being said, there isn't a massive standout in opposition. Um, Fasal Vega might run, Gaelic Warrior might run. He was disappointing. In fact, if I was in the race, I'd, I think he'd absolutely pump Ginny's Destiny. Um, but he's not. He's going to the three-mile race. So f f possibly it's a, still a weak race. I just can't have him whatsoever. Um, I'm going to say his two best chances, and this might be slightly rogue of the week, is Stay Away Faye in the Brown Advisor. I think that is his best chance of a winner. I think his second best chance is Captain Teague as well. I think if he goes to the Bartlett and the ground was to come up absolutely not bottomless, I think he would have a chance. He's clearly a decent horse. He's won a shallow hurdle. He's got speed. He does stay. I think that he is going to be interesting. He's not of a dissimilar mould to a Stay Away Faye from last year. Um, do I think he'll probably win it? Maybe not but I think he's, he's got a big chance at uh, the bumper horse, who knows? And, uh, and I think that stage star in the Ryanair wouldn't be for me. I think he won a, a poor turn as in Brave Man's game. Doesn't look quite the horse of old. Yes, thanks Josh. Been obviously a busy few days for yourself and a busy few days back at HQ as well uh, with an awful lot of road to Cheltenham and just Cheltenham general stuff in work. But we're trying to fight through uh, the next couple of days. Hopefully got a few exciting videos lined up before the previews next week. I'm going to be starting this off by answering the question from Connor McCaffrey, who says, Irish Point has no chance, in his opinion, against State Man in the champion hurdle. It looks to be fab to him, at least, in the stairs. To you both, had his chance on his ground against old opposition and didn't do it. 
why would he throw away a Stairs win to be third or fourth in the champion hurdle? So I think what Connor's obviously getting at here more than anything is the fact that there's been the news, especially given the Constitution Hill news, that Irish Point could be rerouted to the champion hurdle, especially if it's on softer ground. I'm not particularly in love with the idea myself. Uh, I would slightly agree in terms of, I don't believe, I think quite a lot of people think that the Champion Hurdle is going to suddenly become an incredibly open race if Constitution Hill doesn't run. And I just don't believe that's the case. I think it just becomes a lesser race because Constitution Hill isn't in it. And State Man is still an awful lot way ahead of the rest. So therefore, I think it just becomes just as one-sided. Well, not maybe just as one-sided, but I still think it is one-sided, but it's just State Man instead of Constitution Hill. So I do agree with the fact that I think he's got a more of a chance to win a stairs hurdle. I just get the impression we were lucky enough, Josh and I, to, to bump into to Rob Aitchison at the Dublin Racing Festival. And I just feel from connections that they do really think Tiupo is number one. I think Irish Point has probably been a horse that surprised them a little bit. I doubt they probably thought at the start of the season that he would be going three miles. They maybe just wanted to pick up a relatively soft grade one at Christmas time. But the way he did it meant that they've had to go down this route. I hope they do. I still think it's not a forlorn chance that he does beat to you, Bo, in a stairs hurdle. But I just get the vibes that they believe to you, Bo's number one. And if they believe that... Does that mean Irish Point will perhaps go down a route that he maybe shouldn't do? I would like to see Irish Point in the stairs hurdle. I agree with you, Connor. I'm maybe not quite as bullish as you are that he would definitely win the race or, or be favourite. I think Tiubo would go all favourite. I think Jack Kennedy would be on Tiubo. But I want Irish Point in the stairs. The next question comes in from Matt Wall. He asks, do you think racecourse gallops should be banned? I personally think they give an unfair advantage to those who have to use them and it takes numbers away from actual races leading, uh, leading them to be less competitive. What are your thoughts? I, I, I don't think you should ban racecourse gallops because a lot of the top trainers especially, their yards effectively have a racecourse on them anyway. You could do exactly what you do at a racecourse gallop at home. The reason why they take them on a race course gallop is basically just to freshen them up. I think some horses can get so used to their daily routine, suddenly if they're in a horse box in the morning and they're off to Newbury, they're perk up, they're excited, it can just switch them on a couple of weeks before. I think that's probably the main reason. I don't think it's necessarily a fitness edge. Um, obviously, it's going to be slightly more work than what they do in the mornings, but if they wanted to go through the paces at home at Seven Barrows, at Nicky Henderson, at Ditch It, um, at, at Jack Dorcastle Castle with John Joe, they can all do it. They've all got the facilities to do so. I think it's more, more just a, a, a kind of a, a turning on of the mind for the horses and getting them thinking about racing. Um, so I don't think they should be banned. Obviously, does it take away um, them running in a couple of races? Possibly, but a lot of the race course gallops are happening now. Maybe a week in the last week. There probably weren't many opportunities to run, especially very good horses. There wasn't any top graded races to run in. So I don't think they should be banned. I think that every trainer uses them. I think they're more highlighted in this country. Willie Mullins takes all of his to the Curra. Um, I'm pretty sure Gordon Elliott does something very similar. Um, and all of those big trainers will take their horses away a couple of weeks before the festival. That's just kind of a routine. I don't think they're much reading into it. I think it's getting to the stage now where I'm waking up in relatively cold sweats, thinking about Ballyburn and his Supreme slash Ballymore targets, what that will influence the Cheltenham Festival markets. It's on everyone's lips at the moment, and it is on Dean Crozier's lips to ask, do you think Ballyburn's decision rests on what Paul Townend wants to ride? I think he wants to ride Ballyburn and Il Atlantique. So Ballyburn will go to the Supreme. I think that's a very fair point. I think it's an underrated point in terms of, I think, what Townend is going to be on in each race does hold a, a big key into how they're separated. I think what will be the, the interesting thing and what will be probably to the, well, not detriment, but to the advantage of one horse other than the other is Townend's probably in a situation where he's going to have to make the judgment call. Does he want to ride Tully Hill or does he want to ride in Atlantique? If he rides in Atlantique, you would think Ballyburn is in the Supreme. Ballyburn is in the Supreme, then he doesn't ride Tully Hill. If he rides Tully Hill, Ballyburn's in the Baron Bingham. Il Atlantique's in that race as well. He won't ride in Atlantique. So I think it's probably between those two horses. 
it, Tully Hill only has the supreme entries. If he has to run in the supreme, Il Atlantique realistically is only going to go to the Barring Bingham. So those two horses' slots are filled. And really Mystical Power, as much as he does hold a key for the yard, he's a JP horse, Mark Walsh is going to be on him. So he doesn't really come into that conclusion. It will be best for the horse. I'm not saying it's just going to be dictated by riding instructions by any means. But I think if I was to lay down on my sword right now, Townend will want to ride Tully Hill and Ballyburn. And I still think there's a strong chance Ballyburn runs in the Barring Bingham. As a result, it wouldn't surprise me if he's in the Supreme at all. I, to be honest, would probably back him in either. But I wouldn't be surprised if he wants to be on Tully Hill. I don't know why I say it. But I just get those vibes that he might want that. If that's the case, it might be a situation of Tully Hill and Mystical Power and the Supreme. I'm not sure about it, but I think Paul Townend's riding, you know, who he rides and who he wants to ride does hold a key, Dean. I do agree with that. I think he might want to ride Tully Hill a little bit more than he would want to ride Il Atlantique, but that's just personal opinion. Phil Sharples asks, are you concerned about Gordon Elliott's stable form? Been really average over the last four weeks. Are his Cheltenham fancies now bad bets? Uh, Gordon always winds down at this kind of time of year because he's so focused on Cheltenham. He'll have as many runners as he can there. A lot of his horses aren't particularly great ones running in the, in the lead up. Um, I think he probably runs a pretty good one in the Michael Purse or maybe one in the, the 10 up. Equally, that's three, four weeks before Cheltenham, um, but he quietens down because all of his good horses are being primed for this. I wouldn't read too much into it. He's been average stable form. I don't think it's been particularly bad. It's obviously not been great. I think that his horses, if you fancy them, are still going to have massive chances. Jonathan Morrow asks, what do you, the guys think of the reduced mark of Milantino who's been given 126 for the Boodles Good graded triumph form? JP plot he's going on about and um, it's been a very interesting one I think he's been very leniently handicapped there's no getting away from that uh, obviously coming down from an initial English rating he was given I think was 136 uh, before he ran in the November meeting which did seem steep uh, 126 probably seems lenient he's probably somewhere in the, in the middle I think he's a decent chance. Uh, I think he's a horse that probably does have four or five pounds up his sleeve. Whether that will be enough is the thing that would just be uh, would intrigue me. Is one you know is having four pounds in the locker going to be enough to win a Boodles when there could be a horse in there with eight pounds, ten pounds in the locker? I'm not so sure. He seems a solid horse. He seems he'll stay very well. I think he'll handle the hustle and bustle quite well. Whether he quite has the pace. Based off what he's shown so far, that may be the one thing that I'd get at in terms of a negative form. I think he's a well handicapped horse. I do think he'll run well. He'll stay very well. Whether he has the tactical pace to stay in line when the pace quickens, especially coming down the hill, would be my worry. Wouldn't be up the hill. It's down the hill that Milantino will have to stay in the race and the Boodles to have a big chance. If he does so, he'll go very close. Jonathan Lugton asks, uh, what are your thoughts, thoughts on Fergal Adamant not to go to the mayor's novice with a penalty with Dysa Enos. Surely he thinks if she's that good, she wouldn't need to get the weight from the other top mares in the race. I take a mare who's won at graded level and ran in a graded race um, over going there after a few walkovers just to get five pounds less. I think it's interesting. I think the last four or five winners of the mayor's novice's hurdle have all carried a penalty, um, but that's because they've been contesting really top quality races throughout the year. It's a, it's a fascinating race. It's a brilliant race. It really is. There's three mares in there who are possibly top class. They all have something different as well. Brighter Days Ahead looks a proper stout stayer. We've not seen her brilliant over two miles. Her jumping was a lot better up in trip. I think they've done a lot of work on her, on her jumping. That being said, Jade DeGruji looked brilliant in the Sol Arena. She's Willie, she's Kelly Alexander. She's got a massive chance. She looks so good. I'm worried about her. And then Dysart Enos was so good in that bumper at Aintree last year. I think that's probably the form you have to go off. I know she beat, beat the bat at Cheltenham in an obvious hurdle this season, but equally, I was kind of expecting her to do that. She's very, very quick. I, I have no idea how this race is going to pan out. The way that Gordon talks about brighter days ahead, she could be the best horse he's ever trained. Um, Jade DeGruji, Willie absolutely loves her, and Fergal thinks the same. With the five pounds difference, Fergal, I sat down with him for an episode of this Racing Life on Racing TV, and um, 
he, he basically said that at the start of the season, they wanted that plan to be put in place. So they were going to avoid, I think there was a listed race at Newbury, a listed mare's novice hurdle that they could have ran in. I say she would have definitely won that race. Um, and uh, if she had won the race, she'd have to carry five pounds more. They sacrificed that. They want her to have the best possible chance of winning this race. She likes Cheltenham. I don't know. It, 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 it's interesting. I would prefer, like you, Jonathan, the real hardy graded form. That being said, the Sol Arena wasn't a brilliant race. Neither was the race that Brighter Days Ahead has been running in. So I don't think any of them have had a tough race this season, to be perfectly honest. And um, I think it's a fascinating one. If you're going to ask me for the winner, I think Dysar Enos... I think she could get worked up a little bit around Cheltenham. I don't know why I say that, but I got that impression that Fergal was very keen for her to handle Cheltenham and go there before, and she did, but the festival's a different beast, and the fact that they're worried about that is it's slightly concerning. And also, I, I think I agree, him not having the, the comp... I'm not sure it's a confidence. I think it might be really... It's going to look like really shrewd race planning if she wins. It's going to look like possibly doubtful, and they were doubting her before if she gets beat. But I wouldn't like the fact that they've protected her for this five pounds. They really clearly think they need it. Um, it'd be interesting. I personally will be siding with Brighter Days Ahead. And that's probably my blind loyalty to Gordon Elliott. But I do think what she's done has been very impressive. Jay de Grugy looks like the main danger for me. Uh, and it's going to be a fascinating race. Really, really looking forward to that one. Rob Llewellyn asks a interesting ground question. Uh, he noted that I touched on this in the last video only briefly. Uh, but the weather, way the weather is at the moment, the prospect of soft or potentially even heavy ground, how will that come into play in regards to preparation for some of the major horses? And how will that potentially scupper tipping or the horses we've put up? I think looking at my anti-post book, not that it's very good, um, but the likes of Jay DeGruji, Croke Park, like I, I don't really have massive fears. I, I don't feel there's horses in there that, that desperately need spring good ground. I suppose it's more the likes of a Marine National, for instance, for instance, should I say, that as much as he has one on soft, you know, he probably would want slightly better ground, especially given how he ran the last day you'd be a little bit more confident if he was running on better ground. So that does have to come into consideration. There's been an awful lot of rain around. I think it will go off soft, good to soft in places on the first day. It often does. And from then on, it's really a case of how much rain it gets during the week. I think that's probably the underrated thing and something we just can't cater for at the moment. We can't cater for what's the ground going to be like for the Grand Annual. We can probably have a rough idea what it's going to be like for the Supreme, uh, potentially even for the Turners on, on, on the third day, given, you know, fresher ground uh, on the new course. But you look at the last two years now, and it's absolutely, the heavens have opened on the Wednesday of, of the morning of racing, and you get to a Grand Annual, and it's an absolute slop fest. I'm quite interested in Ennis I said it in the Handicap video. He's a good ground horse, though. You know, if it comes up like it has done the last two times in the Grand Annual, he'd have no chance. I think Barry Conn would freely admit he has no chance. He probably would still run the horse because he's over there and you've plotted him at this race. He's probably well handicapped. Give him a chance. But I, I, I think you'd be running on, you know, he'd be running in glue potentially as a result. As for if it's on, you know, more traditional, good to soft ground, I think he'd have a huge chance. So it does have to come into consideration Probably still with two weeks to go. Obviously, you have to look at the weather. You know, you have to uh, analyse how it is. I think it's currently soft at Shell. And that was the latest update yesterday from John Pullen, uh, the clerk of the course. So you'd have to, at the moment, keep your research on the basis that it's going to be that soft ground, potentially even good to soft in places on that first day until we probably see otherwise. If it continues to rain, if it continues to hammer down, we will have to adjust and you'll have to think more down that heavy ground route. But I would never really go into a festival thinking I need to be backing heavy ground horses. As much rain as there may be, I just don't believe they'll almost ever let it go off a swamp to start with. And as a result, I'd probably be still looking for horses that just want general national soft ground. The final question comes from Louis Petit. He asks, uh, watch, watch you lads all the time in the lead up to the festival. Uh, great watch keep it up thank you very much a question uh, who do you think will win the gold cup i can't look away from fast or slow beaten by gallop under shumps last time uh, but the two times he's beaten with punches town he's looked really impressive i think i'd probably agree at the prices gallop under shumps 
four to six. Can you back him in a Gold Cup at four to six? I know he's the best horse in the race. He won the race last year. He beat Fast or So on his final start. He's been ultra, ultra impressive at Leopardstown this season. He was incredible at, uh, at Christmas. But last year on his fourth run, albeit after a Gold Cup, he was beaten. This is going to be his fourth run. He's, he's had an extra run. That extra run has actually come closest to Cheltenham. Last year, he went John Durkin, he went uh, Christmas, and then he went to Cheltenham. This year, he's had a run in between. It would have taken a bit out of him. I know he was good. I know he was impressive, but it would have. And as much as I welcome Willie Mullins running Gallop Under Trumps one more time and the, the, uh, the racing calendar, the race planning has enabled him to do that, it's got to come into it that he's had one more run this season and he's going into a Gold Cup, which is his most extreme test this year. He wasn't electric last year. He was a very good winner, but he didn't jump particularly well. I think the horse was very, very brave to win that day. I'm going to side with fast or slow, I think. Um, at the prices, there's not much between them. I think they probably left a bit of work on fast or slow from Leopardstown at the Dublin Racing Festival. Ruby Walsh, who I work with, made a very good point. Uh, I don't know too much about horses and what they look like in the paddock and conditioning, stuff like that. But he said that he felt that he was a little bit bigger and was carrying some condition. So you can expect him to come on from that. I'm going to go with, with first or so. I think um, I couldn't get stuck into Gallop under Champ at the price that he is. And uh, I think you'd have a very good run for your money with fast or slow. So that's my angle there in the Gold Cup. The final question I'll be answering comes from Magic Hand, who says, what's your strategy for the week? Do you back singles and trying to get ahead early, or do you back multiples and hope to make a big lift over the course of the week? I think it depends day on day uh, and, and person on person, really. Uh, I'm not a massive stakes punter, never have been, probably never will be. So therefore, you know, backing singles is, is decent in terms of it tops things up, but I'm never going to get a big payout from doing that. So therefore, probably every festival I would have one or two, you know, lucky 15s. You know, I might have a lucky 15 a day, for instance, um, that I back in the shop or, or something like that in, in, in the Paddy Power on the main street in Cheltenham. And you, you might put an each way lucky 15 on or something like that and, and, and see where you get from there. Because I do think probably for the smaller stake punter, the idea of getting that big payday is incredibly appetizing. It it it's some it's something that, that does give you your chance at that big payout, which does lure you in. I wouldn't necessarily be advising it in terms of it's not all how I bet. I know quite a lot of people will almost kind of religiously back those sort of multiples trying to get the big payout and then don't necessarily get the reward for individual winners. I still back individually. Uh, I back well, like really come the festival I would back in the majority of races there's some races that you'd sit out especially if there's short price favorites or you're just not keen on you don't have to bet in each of the races if you want to bet more on some you should leave some out I completely get behind all of that all stuff you get told anyway by everyone who, who gives you any type of advice but I suppose my strategy is mostly backing in singles and then maybe a multiple a day and uh, just in case you have that day where you know, you might you might look at the race, and, and I know there's people out there that will back Super Hines, they'll back Lucky 63s, Lucky 31s, there's heaps of bets out there. But if you think you're going to go through a Frankie Dottori at Ascot and potentially go for a Magic 7, you may as well have it in, in a multiple and get your you know couple of grand payouts rather than uh, backing them all individually and maybe only winning a couple hundred quid, which is what, based off the sort of stakes I back at, uh, I'd only be getting. So probably a little bit of a mix of both. Uh, as I say, for everyone it will be different. Some people will be religious on singles, singles for dough, doubles for show, uh, like the old putting and driving acronym of, of golf. But I think there's probably a little a bit of a happy medium in there. Right, I do hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, please hit that like button. Looking forward to the video tomorrow. Uh, it's uh, Super Saturday here in May. Dan, looking forward to that as well. Uh, do come along to our preview night in Birmingham next Thursday. All the details will be down in the description. Would love to see you there, really, really would. And uh, yeah, I'll see you soon.